everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Willie Vasquez, and to, uh, today I'll be telling you about how to have H.264 fun with H.264 Forge. We'll be doing vulnerability hunting, data moshing, and more. A little bit about myself. I'm a PhD student at UT Austin. I do research in cryptography and system security and cyber law and policy. Uh, I've been watching DMUX videos for a while now, uh, and I'm very excited to, it's my first time here, very excited to be here uh, attending, presenting, and so on. So in this talk, uh, it, I'll be telling you about H.264 Forge and how we found vulnerabilities in applications, kernel drivers, and hardware. And these are all the CVEs that we got. Uh, if you want to begin testing your own uh, tools, H.264 uh, Forge, what it is, is a toolkit to work with syntax elements. It's free, open source, available. You can start uh, playing with it now during this talk. So if you're not familiar with what H.264 syntax elements are, here's a quick background. Uh, H.264, or the Advanced Video Codec, was standardized in 2004. Uh, it has an over 800 page spec, uh, but it only defines how to take a compressed bitstream into the frames that we see. Uh, and we focused on H.264 because of its ubiquitous device support. So the, uh, if you scroll down inside of the spec, you'll see this part called the syntax elements. Uh, and what a syntax element is, is a decoding instruction that's read from the bitstream. So each uh, syntax element has what's called a semantics associated with it. And the semantics describe how a syntax element is used, as well as the expected range that it should take on. The, um, each syntax element also has what's called an entropy encoding associated with it. And this is the actual bitstream representation, the bits that we see. So, Going back to H.264, uh, what we want to do is modify H.264 syntax elements. Why would we want to do something like this? Well, two particular use cases. The first is vulnerability hunting. So this is uh, this CVE 22.22.675 is an in the Apple in the wild uh, exploited uh, ode. So this was uh, like attackers already have something like H.264. They're finding vulnerabilities. Uh, and so we want to be able to do that as well. And also data moshing, which is this fun glitch video effect. So are there any existing tools that let you modify syntax elements? Yeah, not so much. So there's FFmpeg's coded bitstream. This uh, lets you uh, modify select syntax elements, but it's mostly related to playback information. And while there are many bitstream viewers, uh, these just tell you what the syntax elements are, not what uh, doesn't let you actually modify them. So in fact, when studying this in the wild CVE, Natalie Silvanovich of Google Project Zero found that uh, she couldn't find such a tool to modify them. And so she was uh, forced to uh, forge the file bit by bit and that uh, it was a terrible experience. To show you some of the challenges that she faced, uh, well, there's two key ones. First is the variable bit length uh, bitstream representation. So take this num ref frames in uh, pick order count cycle. It's encoded using exponential golem, and this is the decimal values that it takes on, as well as the bitstream uh, representation. So if we set num ref frames in pick order count cycle to zero, this is the uh, hex that we get. Um, if we set it to one, this is what we get. And uh, we see that this entire half has changed. To get a concrete sense of what's going on here, uh, let's look at the binary uh, for A728 uh, and A6A5. And we see here that um, we essentially inserted two bits into the stream. So that's, that's the first challenge. The second is the dependency between syntax elements. So in this case, we also had to incorporate uh, a syntax element. Uh, or we also had to include uh, the offset for a ref frame inside of the bit stream. So this is the pain of working with it by hand. With H.264, this is just three lines of Python. And so what H.264 broadly is, is a toolkit to uh, programmatically modify H.264 syntax elements. It's written in 30,000 lines of Rust, and it's free, open source, available under an uh, MIT license. And its key idea is that it abstracts out the bitstream representation. So you take an encoded bitstream, uh, decode each uh, syntax element, and then keep it in memory where you can do whatever you want, and then uh, re-encode it. 
whenever it's in memory, you can programmatically modify it using uh, what we call video transforms. And these are the small Python scripts that I showed you. And in fact, we can just uh, completely ignore an input and just pass in per, uh, uh, ranges that we want for each syntax element uh, per, to produce uh, random out of bounds, uh, videos with random and out of bounds syntax elements. So we can uh, produce the bitstream uh, as well as a MuxMP4, and coming soon we'll have RTP streaming. So uh, there are uh, three use cases that we've, uh, or two main use cases that we've thought of for H.264. First is vulnerability hunting, uh, of course, my background's all in security. Uh, data moshing, having this fun video effect, and at the end I'll be throwing some other fun ideas that I think H.264 can be useful for. So first, vulnerability hunting. With H.264, uh, so the, the key issue is that decoders may miss semantic checks leading to undefined states, and these undefined states may have security consequences. So with H.264, we can generate videos with random and out-of-bounds syntax elements, and then once we find a vulnerability, we can use it as well to create a proof of concept. In fact, uh, we were able to find uh, and, uh, issues and get CVEs for uh, FFmpeg as used by VLC. Uh, we got issues, uh, we got CVEs for issues in the iOS kernel. Uh, a couple of them zero clickable, uh, one in H.265, and uh, also in uh, an information leak in Firefox. So I'll be telling you about one vulnerability that we found today called Lumachroma Thief. And th this is an issue that we found inside of uh, hardware. And what it is, is an out-of-bounds interprediction that leads to a stale or uninitialized data disclosure. Uh, this is in the Kabak encoded values, and we found that uh, across different decoders, we get different results. So just a quick recap of interprediction. Uh, we start off with our frame, break it into macro blocks, and then in order to um, uh, uh, as part of the prediction plus residue, we use the edge pixels, apply the residue, and uh, get our result back. So what would happen if we uh, tried to predict from the topmost row uh, vertically, or the leftmost row, uh, or from the left on the leftmost row? This out-of-bounds interprediction we found leads to different results across hardware. And so we, create, we generated two videos. First is this amplified vertical uh, prediction uh, with no residue whatsoever, and the same for horizontal. And we got three different results. The first is on some decoders, we just got a solid color, which is pretty fine, not so bad. Uh, on others, we were able to read out uninitialized data. So every time we played, the, played back the same video, we got different results. Um, and we're still trying to figure out what exactly these, uh, these values are. If you have any insight, please reach out. Um, and I think most interestingly is we were able to recover pixels from a recently decoded video. So this is a scene from uh, our favorite video, Big Buck Bunny, and the pixels that we were able to recover. So because of this, we dubbed this video Luma Chroma Thief. So how can we actually generate uh, this video with vertical intra-prediction uh, or leftmost intra-prediction? No sane encoder would, would ever generate this. And furthermore, if you wanted to do this by hand, then good luck working through the Kabak encoded uh, syntax elements. So this is where H.264 comes to the rescue. So this is the Python script that we use to, to uh, take an input video, modify the syntax elements, and uh, get Luma Chroma Thief. First, we disable uh, de the deblocking filter to remove stolen values. Then for every macro block inside of a slice, we set, to, we set it to vertical Luma and uh, Chroma prediction. So this summarizes the part on vulnerability hunting with H.264. Uh, you can use it to generate out of bounds uh, videos with out of bounds syntax elements. Uh, and so you can start using it now. Uh, and find issues in your own products before uh, attackers do. So now moving on to the other use case for H.264, data moshing. So uh, there's two common techniques in data moshing. Uh, the first is iframe removal. So now your interpredicted slices are based off of some other random uh, keyframe. And also interframe copying that has this amplifying effect uh, for, for motion. 
And there's already a lot of existing tutorials out there on how to do data moshing with hex editors or AVI DMUX. And these tutorials are great. Uh, but what we're proposing is data moshing with H.264Forge. So take this scene from Big Buck Bunny. And here is a data moshing transform that will just duplicate each interpredicted slice some amount of time. We apply it to our video, and then we get this amplified motion effect. So uh, more use cases for H.264Forge. We think it could be useful in doing syntax element surgery, so um, identifying issues inside of transmitted videos and then just going in and uh, easily modifying a syntax element. Uh, later on today, there's going to be a talk on steganography, so uh, while working with the syntax elements, you can hide messages inside of there. Um, Anyone that works with user-generated content, uh, H.264Forge could be used to monitor for anomalous syntax elements in uh, uh, content that's coming in to find potential in the wild exploits. And we don't know what else. Uh, the, it's, it's open. Uh, we think H.264Forge can be used to work in the compressed domain. Uh, um, so yeah. The, to conclude, H.264Forge provides the capability to work with syntax elements. Uh, the code is open, available, please go check it out. Uh, if you're interested in, in our security results, uh, we have a paper that was published at Usenix Security. This is joint work with Stephen Chekaway of Oberlin College and my advisor Hobab Shasham of UT Austin. And yes, contributions and feature requests are welcome. I will now take any questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.